So whatever we learn from the Lord, that's what we pass on to others so that that disciple will obey all of Christ's commands and the, the uh, very clear commands of Jesus in the Bible. And then we obey that and then we, we, we replicate that. We pass it on maybe to our children, maybe to your husband or wife, or maybe to your neighbor, or maybe so, to some <laughs> other brothers and sisters in this, in this uh, uh, church. So that's what discipleship is all about. I'm glad that the Lord has used somebody to, decide, to lead me to, to Christ and to disciple me to maturity. That was what, when I was in, in engineering school. So somebody took the, the, the time to help me grow in my faith. I'm thankful for that, for the Lord. And I've seen how effective this was. Discipleship is Christ's command. He's thinking about kingdom growth. He's thinking about mature, transformed Christians or believers who are Christ-like, more humble, uh, more loving and compassionate, and more zealous for the gospel. So, so that's the strategy of the Lord to develop disciples who are like Him and whom he can use in expanding his kingdom throughout the world. So that's what discipleship is all about. I've seen, I've been a chaplain in, in prison, and I've seen how these prisoners whom I used to teach the word of God and disciple, they've been transformed into a humble, loving, compassionate, zealous servants of the Lord. And some of them are called to be pastors, uh, and uh, so that's, that's discipleship. I believe there will be transformation in the lives of every church member of FICC if we, if we are serious in, in obeying the, the mandate of the Lord to make disciples. Amen? I believe this church will explode to grow. Maybe at first it's slow growth. You disciple one, then you become two, then four. But in the long run, it has an exponential Potential, Expon you will grow exponentially. It's low at first, but later on it will build up. Like what happened with Jean Kai and Grace Kai. Maybe Pastor Hill have shared to you about these two uh, people. They, uh, Jean Kai is a, 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 a chaplain in the army in Texas. He answered God's call to be a missionary to, to Asia. He started discipling 30 believers and, and for short, to make the story short, in, two, in eight years, less than a decade, he baptized more than two million people of eight years background, people. From farmers to factory workers and to the CEOs. How did that, did that happen? It's discipleship, it's disciples multiplying disciples, multiplying disciples, 30 disciples, uh, another 30, and those disciples, uh, multiply to the next generations of, of disciples. So that's the biblical discipleship we are talking about. So let's go to, to how do we do it? How do we disciple effectively in this church? Now, let's see the example of Jesus. We will see here seven principles. Uh, by the way, discipleship uh, according to the Bible is not a class to attend to, but a uh, life to live by or live with. It is not informational download. If that is the case, if it's the educational model of discipleship is education, informational download, then Judas will be a, a great disciple because he heard every teaching of Jesus. It's not just information, but life on life transformational process. It's more caught than taught. And then it's not a meeting, but it's a movement of rapid multiplication of disciples and churches. So I'm excited about what God will do in, in and through this church when we become serious in making disciples who will make disciples. So before we go to the first principle that the Lord te is teaching us on how to make disciples, let's see, let's think for a moment. Is there transformation happening in the lives of FICC members from the leaders to the youngest member? Amen? He 
Is there reproduction happening? If, are these disciples rep, uh, multiplying other disciples? If not, there's something to be done to tweak or maybe to overhaul the discipleship ministry of this church. And the best way to, to make disciples is to follow Jesus' example of making disciples. Right? He discipled the, the 11, the, 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 uh, the 12 became a Judah, so he's not a real disciple. So he discipled the 11, and the 11 uh, uh, discipled many others, and here we are right now. We will not see each other uh, here at FICC if these disciples did not obey Christ's command of making disciples. So let's, let's evaluate first, is discipleship happening in this church? Do we need to improve or enhance the discipleship ministry? Do we need to tweak or maybe to overhaul the discipleship ministry? Or have we lost it? Then we need to bring it back. Because in some churches, they lost discipleship. You believe that? That's why they, they don't grow. There's no life transformation in the lives of the members. They replace it with activities and programs and meetings, but does not contribute to the development of the faith and uh, maturity of the members. So let's bring back discipleship to our churches, to our ministry. And how do we do that? How do we bring it back? Let's see the first principle that the Lord Jesus is teaching us. So Jesus, Jesus' way is the best way. We make disciples Jesus' way. So are you ready, brothers and sisters? I'm challenging everyone. So if you are not a disciple yet, be a disciple. If you are already a disciple, be determined to disciple others. Find someone, find a Timothy that you can disciple. And there are many are waiting. The world, is, the world is already discipling them in consumerism, in, uh, in materialism. The world is doing a great job of discipling your children and young people and uh, other members of this church. If we don't make disciples, then the world will, the culture will. So let's disciple them in Christ. So how do we do that? Number one, disciple disciples. So the first principle we need to learn in discipleship is we disciple whom? Disciples. Disciples are true Christians who have made a total commitment and irrevocable commitment to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and to live a, a life of obedience to Christ. That's a disciple. There's no such thing as a disciple who is not committed to Christ. A halfway Christian. There's no such disciple as that. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. Follow me. That's a lifelong obedience. That's just a month or a year that you go back to your old life. It's a continuous, lifelong obedience to Jesus. So, disciple, disciples. The requisite for growth is life. So this is what Jesus said. Even as thou gavest him authority over all mankind, that to all whom thou hast given him, he may give eternal life. So discipleship start, starts with salvation. So you share the gospel. You share how to become a real Christian to somebody. And we, when you say yes to Jesus, that's the beginning of discipleship. When a person accepts Christ as Lord and Savior, what happens to his heart? There will be heart transformation. That's the fundamental basis of real life transformation. It begins with the heart, from the inside out. You, so that's why we disciple disciples. If we do not disciple, if we disciple those who haven't experienced real conversion to Christ, then we will be frustrated. We will hit the wall because nothing will happen. He will attend uh, services every Sunday. He will go to small group or Sunday school, but not life transformation that will happen because the heart has not been changed yet. So let's make sure that we disciple disciples or lead someone to a real relationship with Jesus. When you accept Christ as a new, as a, as his Lord and as your Lord and Savior, you have a new heart, new purpose, new passion. You will be motivated to know more about Jesus. You'll be motivated to, to obey Jesus because you love him. Amen? 
So we disciple, disciple, find those who are hungry for Christ. Find those who are hungry to know about spiritual things and, and disciple them in Christ. So we, that's how we start discipleship. Start with witnessing and leading someone to the Lord. As Jesus said, I gave them eternal life. He discipled the disciples who have eternal life. Second principle is that we disciple disciples in the word. So let's go to the next principle. So uh, number one, who are we going to disciple? We disciple disciples. Go make disciples and then teach them to obey all things that Christ has commanded us. We disciple disciples in the word. The word of God is God's instrument to, to renew the mind, which will renew the behavior and the entire lifestyle, business ethics, or, or character of a person. So the word of God is powerful. It's for teaching, for correction, for rebuke, and for training in righteousness that the man or woman of God may be equipped in all good, good works. So how we do that? Through the word of God. Disciple, disciples using the word of God. Jesus said, for the words which thou gavest me, what? I have given to them. He taught the disciples the word of God. They know who God is. They know the attributes of God, that he is the creator, ruler of the universe. And he loved us so much that he sent his son to rescue us, to deliver us from sin. They know that God is all powerful, omniscient, omnipotent, and uh, all-knowing God. So they taught them the word, and if you will continue to read, Verse, that's in verse 8. I gave them the word. And verse uh, 14. See, let's see 